Suck on this, you pathetic do-gooder. Ha! Waking up? About damned time. Oh, hero. Wake up! There we go. Uh-uh. If you know what's good for you, which your track record has shown is... Highly unlikely. You shut your damned mouth and you listen to what I have to say to you. Understood. Smart man, for probably the first time in your life. <sighs> or not. Come on, man. Do you not recognize the power suppressors when you see them? Your superhuman abilities and all those hulking muscles don't mean shit here. It's just you and me, hero. You, me, and this sharp little friend of mine. My powers. Why would I need them with what I'm about to do to you when you are totally unable to lift a finger to stop me? And the most insulting thing of all is that you don't even recognize me. You don't realize that you are the reason I became as I am now. <laughs> a villain? More of an anti-hero than a villain, really. You see, hero, there's one major difference between you and I. Our similarities are innumerable, and we'll have plenty of time to get into them. As I carve them into your flesh, if need be. But no, the thing you need to focus on is what makes us so very, very different. Any guesses as to what? That could be. Pfft. No. Idiot. Obviously, I'm a woman and you're a man. If you really think that our genders hold any weight as to why you're here, under my tender care, you're lucky you're attractive because you are dumber than a box of rocks. And not even those cute pet rocks with the googly eyes. Your great value brand, Dumb Rocks. <laughs> Aww, what's the matter, hero? Feeling weak, trapped here by a woman who's half your size? Feeling powerless? Does being at the mercy of someone who never even registered to your awareness before make you nervous? Good. I hope you're scared. That stupid spandex suit shows you off in all the right places, but it doesn't do fuck all to keep you warm, does it? The chill and the damp of the basement starting to set in. Glorious. 
stupid heroes and your fucking grandstanding. It's all about putting on a show to you, isn't it? You pretend that it's about saving and helping people. But it's never been about that. Not for you, at least. You are more worried about how you're perceived. How loved and approved of you are by the masses of sheeple who buy your merchandise. The equally vapid simpletons who worship you all like your gods on earth. Bet you wish you were back home, snuggled up in that penthouse suite of yours, don't you? Literally above all the rest of us commoners who struggle through daily existence having to hope against hope that we're not just collateral damage in the war of egos you assholes have with each other and other so-called villains. <sighs> there I go, almost giving away the game before we've even truly begun to play it. Tisk tisk. You got me monologuing. Must be some innate power you souped-up shitheads have. Or maybe it's just the blind narcissism. Anyway, here, let me take off this pointless blindfold. I know you won't recognize me, so keeping you from seeing me isn't going to make one damned bit of difference. There you go. Of course, it's dim and dark in here, you dunce. We're in a basement. The lighting is dim on purpose. Adds to the atmosphere, the threatening aura. God knows I need to ramp up the drama to seem even remotely intimidating to a strapping young lad such as yourself. Please, your forearm is as thick as my thigh. You're a beast, and you know it. And no, as much as I want to give you a Colombian necktie to send a message to all your hero buddies, I'm unfortunately not immune to your physical charms. But there's more to someone than appearances. Their actions determine who they truly are. Not the things they say, not the way they choose to present themselves to the world, not how brightly they smile for the cameras. What a person does determines whether they're really captivating, or just another pretty face covering up an abominable interior. And you, my muscle-bound moron, are the latter of the two. <laughs> no, I'm not some obsessive fan. If that were the case, I'd have chopped you up into little hero nuggets and eaten you already, so you'd be part of me forever. Or at least until the digestion cycle was finished. It was my flames that knocked your ass out in that battle back there, genius. There. To eliminate any doubt in your mind that if I truly wanted you dead, you'd be crispier than the sugar on a creme brulee. I even waited until that freak body of yours did its healing dance before I cuffed you with the power dampeners. Entirely too considerate of me, if I do say so myself. Oh ho. Did the flames jog your memory a bit? You flinched when it flared to life. I'm ashamed to admit it gave me a little chill watching that fear in your eyes. What do I want from you? 
I want you to remember, Hero. To remember why you and I are different. And not just our genders and the obvious income disparities. There's a reason that you're here. That I will be vengeance given flesh. I'll be keeping you alive and well until something jogs the memory in that pretty head of yours. <sighs> no. No, that's not... Are you fucking serious right now? I'm not a goddamn monster like you! <clears throat> Son of a bitch. Well. <laughs> Seems you've managed to make me lose my composure, hero. Not very cold, calculating, villainous of me. Hmm. As much as I'd love to just smother you to death with this blanket, that'd be too easy. Your end isn't coming anytime soon, and it won't be by my hand. Once you remember... It'll likely be by your own. And on that note, I'm going to leave you for the evening. I'll come back around when it's breakfast time, to make sure you keep your stamina up. Try not to freeze to death overnight, would you? Sleep well, hero.